every year the fourth Sunday of Easter, and this regarding which of the three years of the three-year cycle of Sunday readings we might be on, A, B, or C. The fourth Sunday of Easter is always known as Good Shepherd Sunday. This is because all four readings, I say four because I'm including the responsorial psalm, all four readings revolve around the theme of the Good Shepherd and his flock. Very comforting theme very comforting theme. This year, it's also the secular Mother's Day, which we will recognize with a blessing at the end of Mass, as well as during our universal prayer, the general intercessions. It's also the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, which coincides with the Good Shepherd theme, praying for shepherds, whether bishops at the heads of dioceses or pastors at the heads of parishes, even superiors at the heads of religious orders, praying for our shepherds, but also again praying for the flock. So we remember vocations in a special way across the board, not just pastors, not just clerics, but also religious life in general. But whereas the Good Shepherd Sunday theme often seems to focus on the shepherds, today I wish to focus on the flock, us, we who are members of the flock. I think this is very important too. In fact, I think the church wants us to focus on the flock. And so I do that today. Kimberly Shankman is the academic dean at Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas. And she tells us the following regarding her lived experience as being a member of the flock. She says this, nine years ago, my son had to be airlifted and be life flighted to the regional trauma center after a devastating car accident. My husband and I had to travel down in our car for over an hour not knowing whether he was dead or alive. We were reeling. We thought we were alone. That no one really knew what had happened and that we would have to navigate this all alone by ourselves. When we finally made it to the hospital, flustered and almost dazed with apprehension, we didn't know where to go or what to do. But as soon as we walked in, we saw a room full of our friends with more people joining the crowd to watch and pray with us throughout the night. Word had spread, and friends and colleagues and even people we barely knew made the trip to be with us and support us. This was a sign more real than anything we had ever experienced, that our true shepherd had us, his flock, well in hand. We weren't on our own. We were part of a flock that was always protected. In the challenges of caring at home for our now totally disabled son, we still see the same shepherd. He surrounds us with a loving flock of friends and neighbors, visitors and caregivers who serve as a constant reminder daily that even or especially at our weakest and most vulnerable moments, he will always find us, lay us on his shoulders, and guide us in the paths we should go. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, this fourth Sunday of Easter, the risen Christ consoles us with these words from the Gospel of John, quote, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. What fills Christ's disciples as members of the flock with joy in the Holy Spirit is the Good Shepherd's voice, which is identical with the gift of life itself. 
human life made in God's image and likeness. In fact, like the converts whom St. Paul and St. Barnabas urged to remain faithful to the grace of God in the flock, in the first reading today from Acts, our own happiness lies in our faithfulness to the tender voice of the shepherd and of understanding that each one of us is among many of a flock. We're a flock right now in this physical church house, this physical, beautiful church building. We're a flock right now. There's 132 of us in here, let's say. That's a flock of 132. We can't forget this. Good Shepherd Sunday celebrates the correspondence between the longing of the human heart and the promise made to us that God will send a faithful shepherd who will never abandon us. And did you hear the collect prayer at the beginning of Mass after the penitential rite? The collect prayer called him a brave shepherd, a brave shepherd. It also mentioned a humble flock, a humble flock. Even our responsorial Psalm 100 had us repeat and chant the important belief that indeed we are his people, the sheep of his flock. And the second reading from the book of Revelation also confirms for us that this shepherd is also the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God who lives to take away the sins of the world and who will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Some of you can see visually from your vantage point in the pew the beautiful image of the good shepherd holding to his breast his sacred heart The lost sheep, huh? We think of that image today, especially, I think, on Good Shepherd Sunday. Bishop Robert Barron, in his letter to a suffering church, says we should never leave the flock of the church because it is the church alone that teaches and speaks the fullness of truth about the following. The Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit the merciful love of the Father and the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of all. The Holy Spirit and his manifold works, gifts, and fruits. The fullness of sacred scripture as the divinely inspired word of God. The seven sacraments and their economy of salvation how they aid the individual toward salvation. The lives of the saints and the dignity of the human person and human life issues. Again, Bishop Barron, in his letter to a suffering church, says we should never leave the flock of the church because it is the church alone that teaches and speaks the fullness of truth about those very areas. There's a great quote from St. Ignatius of Antioch in his letter to the Philadelphians. First century, he died around 107. He says this, as sons and daughters of the light of truth, flee divisions and evil doctrines. Where your shepherd is, follow him as his faithful flock. Be careful, therefore, to take part only in the one Eucharist, for there is only one flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ and one cup of his blood to unite us and one altar and one bishop with the priests and deacons who are his fellow servants. This is why we stay humble, faithful members of the flock to those areas just given to us by Bishop Barron, precisely because we take part in the one flesh, in the one celebration of the Eucharist, in the one cup, the one altar, united with the one bishop, with his priests and deacons who are his fellow servants. What a gift we have in this doctrine of the Good Shepherd and his flock. St. Ignatius of Antioch goes on, kind of quipping almost. I would have liked to have known his temperament. (laughs) Maybe he was a little sanguine. 
but he ends almost with a quip. You do all of these things, then you do whatever you do according to the will of God. In other words, your life will be so in conformity with God that you live and doest what thou wilt, but it isn't really what thou wilt because you're so in conformity with the will of God, you're doing and willing precisely what God wills because you're a member of the faithful, humble flock. Poem St. Gregory the Great talks about protecting the flock, kind of an exhortation to the shepherds. He's one of the four popes known as the Great with a surtitle, Pope St. Gregory. He says, to advance against the foe in this world involves a bold resistance to the powers of this world in defense of the flock. To stand fast in battle on the day of the Lord means to oppose the wicked enemy out of love for what is right, good, and true. Reminds me of number 1803 of the Catechism, which gives us the definition of virtue and virtuous living. Virtue and virtuous living are pursuance of the good, the true, and the beautiful in concrete daily actions with all five of the bodily senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing, and the four primary faculties of the soul, intellect, will, memory, and imagination. These nine great gifts of the body-soul composite in conformity with the will of God. To advance against the foe involves a bold resistance to the powers of this world in defense of the flock. To stand fast in battle on the day of the Lord means to oppose the wicked enemy out of love for what is right, good, and true. Pope St. Gregory the Great. Maybe this is why 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25 says, By his wounds you have been healed, for you had formerly gone astray like a sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your soul. Again, the one who went astray, huh? That's now held at the sacred heart and breast of our Lord Jesus Christ. I loved yesterday's collect prayer for Saturday of the third week of Easter. It says, keep, O shepherd, those reborn in baptism, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully preserve the grace of your blessing. That by defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully preserve the grace of your blessing. Those are just words that just embolden in God's grace and make us want to defend the truth. We have a shepherd who cares for us. We have a shepherd who watches over us. We have a shepherd who was willing to die for us. What a gift our Catholic faith is, huh? So with St. Gregory of Nyssa, another Gregory, we say, how could I not love you, O shepherd? who have loved me so much as to lay down your life for the sheep whose shepherd you are. There can be no greater love than this to lay down your life for my salvation, O oh, good shepherd. Gregory of Nyssa is having a one-on-one -on -one with him. That's what St. Teresa of Avila means when she says prayer is simply conversation with God. You notice that quote is in the first person singular. St. Gregory of Nyssa is talking directly to him. How could I not love you, who have loved me so much, O good shepherd, as to lay down your life for the sheep whose shepherd you are? There can no be any greater love than to lay down your life for my salvation, he's telling the good shepherd. And we heed the counsel of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, the Sacred Heart visionary from France, and remember, the good shepherd is holding the lost sheep returned to his sacred heart. We heed the counsel of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, the sacred heart visionary from France, who exhorts, 
we must take refuge in the adorable heart of our Good Shepherd. Let us go to him like little sheep of the flock who seek the safety of their sheepfold against the infernal world. Infernal world? Yeah, the infernal world, like Mr. and Mrs. Shankman experienced the day they got that devastating phone call. That infernal world that's wounded and broken because of the original sin. More reason to remain faithful. More reason to remain humble flock members in honor of the brave shepherd. Indeed, Jesus is the Lord, the lamb on the throne who will shepherd his flock, his humble, faithful flock, and who wants to give all in that flock the great gift of eternal life. God bless you.